media in the workroom, uh, Florida is walking down the steps and will be on stage in just a few minutes, maybe 60 minutes, 60 seconds. So Florida will be here shortly. Hey, guys. You all play well. We are ready to begin with the um, Gators of the University of Florida, Coach Mike White. Student athletes are uh, Igor Kulachov and um, Chris Chioza. Coach, we'll turn to you first for uh, opening comment. Congratulations on your victory. Thank you. Uh, just very pleased with the overall performance, of course. Beat a really good St. Bonaventure team um, who's obviously been playing really, really well. I'd like to congratulate St. Bonaventure and Mark Schmidt and his staff and his players. They had an amazing run, a great year. Um, they play as hard, in my opinion, as any team in college basketball. Have a terrific backcourt, share it, really defend it at a really high level. Um, it, we've had some, some quality wins this year. We've had some big wins, and this was certainly one of them. Thank you, Coach. Let's go to questions for our three. Uh our two student athletes, and we'll come back for Coach White at the end. First question here on the uh, right side. Yeah, Kevin Brockway, Gainesville Sun, uh, for either Chris or Igor or both. Uh, how much do you think the defense, particularly early in the second half, kind of set the tone for you guys? Um, Chris, you want to take that? Yeah, I got it. Uh, that was our, that's what got us going. Uh, we got stops uh, early in the second half, and we got out running and got some easy baskets in transition. Um, and we just kind of built the momentum from there. And uh, we was able to maintain it for most of the second half. Other questions? OK, we'll follow up here on, the, on your right. Yeah, a uh, question for Igor. It seemed like the game plan was to shoot over their zone. And eventually, you guys started hitting shots. You guys went through some droughts. but. Uh, how much did sticking with it kind of help, or did you feel like you could have attacked it better at times? Um, maybe at times we could have attacked it better, but we felt like even in the first half when we went through that drought, uh, we felt like we were getting really good shots, and we felt like you know if we keep getting those, uh, we're going to be okay. We had a good game plan going in. Uh, they changed the pace of the game with that zone, um, you know, but eventually we figured it out. Uh, shots started falling, and you know we defended at a high level, like you said, that um, the first four minutes especially. Uh, that was our main emphasis coming out of the halftime. I'll move to the uh, left side now. Remember to please state name and affiliation. Uh, Jake Winterman, ESPN Gainesville. Question for Chris. Uh, you guys held Mobley and Adams only 21 points. Did you feel that coming into the game, if you were able to limit those guys effectively, you'd obviously be on the right step to victory? Uh, yeah, you, I mean, those, those are two great guards. And, uh, you know, we had to focus in on them along with uh, Stockard. Uh, we know those were their three, you know, main guys that scored. And uh, we just wanted to, you know, make it tough for them to, you know, score, not give them any, you know, open looks early, get them going. Uh, they hit a couple tough ones. And, but, you know, when you're playing good players, you know, they're going to do that. And uh, we did a good job of not letting that um, get to our confidence. And we just, you know, played hard the whole game and was able to, you know, keep them from doing what they normally do. We'll move back on the right. Chris, 11 more assists tonight, the ability to kind of find your teammates, uh, particularly when you went through some stretches against the zone, just, just kind of how, how key was that and how key was, was the ball movement uh, at times? Uh, I mean, guys were knocking down shots. We did a, a good job of moving the ball. Um, we didn't really rush anything. We, we, you know, found open guys. Guys did a good job of moving around the zone. Um, when I penetrated, they would you know, relocate, and I was able to just find them, and they, they had confidence. Uh, I just tell them every time they're open, uh, shoot it. If it's an open look, you know, we're never going to get mad if we miss them, so. We'll stay here on the right. Yeah, uh, Igor, I see a scratch on your shoulder. Was that kind of just the kind of game it was in terms of kind of the physicality and the, the desperation that you guys had? <laughs> no, uh, that's actually courtesy of Kavarius Hayes. Um, practice a couple of days ago, he actually scratched my other shoulder as well. Uh, I don't know how that happens, uh, but yeah, it's kind of happened. Uh, it's not a big deal, honestly. 
Okay, we'll go on um, our student athletes left. Uh, just a question for both of you guys. The play Jalen Hudson made with the putback dunk, like what, what went through your mind right when that happened? What was your instant reaction? Chris, we'll let mind. you go first. Oh, Lord. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I was just like, I was kind of shocked. Uh, I couldn't believe he made it. He got up over uh, his own teammates, the other team. Uh, I think his head was over the rim. <laughs> yeah, I had a good look at it from the corner. So I kind of saw the whole play <laughs> develop. And, you know, the first thing I just kind of said, like, wow. Like, he looked like he literally, like, climbed the ladder uh, to get that. And then, then I heard the foul, too. I mean, it, it was a great play. Jalen is a top nine, I mean, athlete. You know, score. I mean, whatever. Uh, he he can make those plays. Okay, we'll go on the back and now. Uh, Ian Preston, WCJB Gainesville. Uh, this is for both you guys, uh, thoughts on going in the next round and potentially playing against what's probably going to be a pretty hostile environment here. Igor, I'll take it. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, we kind of got to settle, uh, move on from uh, this victory. Uh, tomorrow, I mean, obviously we're gonna watch some film. Uh, we we gotta be prepared for a hostile environment. Obviously, uh, we're in Texas. Uh, we saw they have a lot a lot of crowd here. Uh, but you know, we're gonna do our best. Treat it uh, as every other game this year. Uh, lock in on our end. Uh, try to defend at a high level. Um, you know, get a good scout report in. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, we know it's gonna be hostile. Um, you know, a lot like we've played in. You know neutral site games, a lot of those have been like road games to us, uh, especially early in the season, like when we played Gonzaga um, in Portland. So, I mean, we're just going to come out and we're going to, you know, focus on our game plan, focus on us and uh, whatever the coaches tell us, you know, they're going to have us prepared um, as well as we can be. Um, you know, they, they take pride in that and that's why they're, you know, such good coaches. So, uh, we're just going to come out there and do whatever they say, play hard and just be ready, be ready for a fight. Closing questions now for our student athletes here in the middle, here on the right. Igor Stephen Hawkins with the AP in, in Dallas. How, how much does this kind of much better NCAA memory for you than your freshman year? <laughs> uh, a lot better, a lot better. You know, I was hoping not to have uh, another bad one. You know, this like four years later. Uh, I mean, you know, this that's what I wanted when I came here. Uh, we're obviously, you know, not done. Uh, still, hopefully, a lot of basketball to be played. But um, I mean, this team, the coaching staff. I mean, they've been awesome, uh, and it's just the whole experience. Uh, just even not from the NCAA tournament, just the whole year. Uh, it's been amazing. Okay, the last question. Yeah, uh, Kevin Brockway Gaines will send a question for Chris. This has been such a roller coaster season, and uh, you have a national analyst that's picking against you again after you know leaving the SEC tournament early again. Just what does it say about this group that uh, it kind of took that to heart and, and bounced back tonight and showed the kind of effort that it showed? I mean, you know, it's always, you know, chip on your shoulder when you're you're picked to lose in the first round as a higher seed uh, for the second year in a row. Uh, you know, it just it gives you a little bit more, you know, fuel, you know, just to go out there and prove people wrong. But again, you know, you try not to make too much out of it. Um, go out there and try to treat it like any other game. You know, you don't want to get too excited for it because uh, people are talking about you. But uh, of course, it, it gives you a little bit more, you know, a little more spunk to your game. Okay, Igor and Chris, we'll let you go back to the locker room. I'm sure there'll be some media there waiting for you. Uh, congratulations on your victory, and we will see you tomorrow in the interview session. Good luck on Saturday. Questions now for Coach. Coach right up front, here on the right. Coach Joe Sorallo, the BV newspaper. Uh, last year, you faced the Bonnies uh, in Florida. Mobley and Adams dropped a combined 48 against you guys. Yeah. How much did seeing them just a year ago and rewatching film from that game help you prepare for tonight's matchup? I, I think it was definitely to our advantage <clears throat> to understand how good they are um, individually and, and obviously as a team uh, to have um, experienced it firsthand. I think that if this was the first time we had played them, uh, we, we definitely wouldn't have been as prepared. You know, have, have the utmost respect for the job, again, that Coach Schmidt and, and, that, and, and, and St. Bonaventure have, have done and, and the program that they've rebuilt here uh, as of late. Uh, obviously, for their backcourt, um, those guys, they, they went nuts on us the last year in Lakeland, late in the game. I want to say we were up 15, 17, and it was tied with about a minute, maybe a minute and a half, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Um, they're just they're a handful to guard, and and our guys know they were very familiar, 
especially our veteran guards led by Chris Chills and Kayvon Allen, who I thought both did a terrific job tonight. They know that when, when Adams and Mobley cross half court, they're in range and they can score off the bounce, they can score off the catch, they scored off down screens, off staggers, uh, off handoffs. Uh, we went under one early um, on Mobley um, where, where he, he made us pay, of course, from really deep. But they're just, they're really good guards and, and they run good stuff. Uh, so obviously, I'm really pleased with our defensive effort. We'll move to coaches left. Uh, Coach, what did you sort of tell your team at halftime and what was the attitude since even though you guys were only up by five and the offense wasn't great, the defense was still there, what did you mm -hmm. tell your team and what was the attitude like? I stay the course offensively. I liked our ball movement in the first half. We missed, we missed a couple more right at the rim um, that we'll, you know, we'll continue to, to, to address. And I thought we had decent looks from three against a really good zone because we're a really good passing team, uh, especially certain lineups that we play, of course. and, and Keystone and Igor playing in the in the in the middle of zones and playing in the in the corners and short corners. They have an ability to to find guys, and then we've got multiple guys that can make shots. So, you know, we, we try to spread zones out as much as possible. Um, try to do the same thing against man. And I thought we had some decent looks. So I, I was actually pleased. Uh, we just talked about staying the course, focusing on getting a great shot, not the result, whether it goes in or not. Let's next possession. Let's get a great shot and. Um, more than anything, um, first four minutes of the second half, getting back to uh, that same edge defensively, making sure that we came out um, because you know, we've had struggles. A lot of teams have struggles. First four minutes of the second half, um, regaining that uh, that defensive uh, edge and energy that we played with in the first 20. Let's go in the back, last row. Adam Grossbar, Dallas Morning News. Michael Caro went down with what looked like a head injury. Looked like he took a shot to the head there at the end. Uh, how's he doing, and will he be able to go on Saturday? Yeah, I anticipated. I, he's fine. I, you know, I, I asked him how he's feeling. He's feeling great. You know, I think he just he just bumped his head. You know, part of it. I think we had a few guys get their head bumped tonight in the game by the Bonnies and by each other. Closing questions now for Coach White. Up toward the front. Mike, how, how big was it for, uh, you know, uh, Jalen and Igor to both kind of give you production, especially coming off, uh, you know, the game against Arkansas? Uh, it, was, it, it, it was great. I mean, it's, it's crucial for us to get balanced scoring. Um, it's, it's, it's who we are. It allows us to spread the floor. Uh, it, it promotes the, that, that movement of the basketball, of course. Jalen, it took him a little while, and he finally got it going. He had a huge play, of course. Igor was great offensively. Um, for the for the better part of the game, of course, um, we were led by Chris Chioza, eleven assists, zero turnovers. My goodness, that's a luxury to have as a head coach. Uh, when the ball's in his hands, good good things happen. And you know, he drew fouls as well. He got guys shots, and he probably could have had fifteen assists. You know, if if we shot it at a really high clip. Uh, in addition, he chased he chased Mobley around for forty minutes. Whenever he was in the game, however many minutes he played, he was chasing him around. Um, Looks like 31. And I thought Kayvon Allen, in addition, he didn't get it going offensively for us. I thought he was terrific on Jalen Adams. Uh, it, was a, it was a good overall team defensive effort. Again, led by Chris Gioza and Kayvon Allen. Those guys really dug in and, and stepped up, uh, knowing how important it was to slow those uh, terrific guards down. OK, Coach, we'll let you go and start thinking about the next game. Thank you for coming. And Thanks, congratulations. guys. Congratulations. Thank you.
Hey, those of you working in the media workroom, St. Bonaventure is almost on stage, coming down the steps. And we are now joined by the Bonnies of St. Bonaventure, um, head coach Mark Schmidt. Student athletes are Matt Mobley and Jalen Adams. Coach, we'll look to you first for your thoughts on tonight's game. Yeah, all, all the credit goes to Florida. I thought they'd had a, a great game plan coming in. Um, they did a really good job on, on us uh, defensively, um, you know, especially on Jay and Matt. Uh, they just seemed like they were they were quicker than us. They were longer than us. Um, you know, at times they dominated us on the on the ball. Um, I, I thought you know I thought our defense in the first half we didn't play uh, very well offensively in the first half. But you know I, I thought being down by five going into the locker room was a was a moral victory. You know I, I thought we were right there. We had the ball coming out uh, in the second half, and you know we always talk about talked to the team about the first five minutes of the second half, the first 10 possessions were going to be critical, and they jumped on us. Um, and the first four minutes of the second half, it went from, you know, five to 14 or whatever, and then, you know, we were, we were you know, fighting an uphill battle from there. But, you know, I, I'm proud of what we've accomplished. I'm proud of these two guys, along with Idris, uh, the three seniors, the things that we've done, uh, that they've done not only this year but through their career. Um, it was disappointing um, you know, the way it ended, um, but I, I was proud the kids kept on fighting. Um, you know, we just lost to a better team today. Okay, Coach, thank you. Let's go to questions for the two guys first. We'll come back for Coach here at the end. Yeah, we're going to go to student athletes first. Okay, um, I think we have one toward the back on the aisle. Guys, the three-point shot was something that you really could rest on all season, and, and lately it kind of went away, especially today, missing, I think I think it was just three of 18 or 19. Can you just talk about what happened to the shot and, and how bad that was for it not to be falling versus a team this good? Um, credit uh, Florida's defense. Um, they were long and they were active early, uh, forced us into some tough shots. Um, I think we played a lot of one-on-one -on -one early. They didn't really move the ball. Uh, took some bad shots, and, and it kind of affected the rhythm. Um, from there, we couldn't, we couldn't really stick any after that. So it's going to be rough to win the game without the three. OK, on the left. Uh, yeah, guys, uh, this question's for both of you. Four games in the last six days, travel to Dayton, travel from DC, and then fly all the way to Dallas. Did fatigue, how much was fatigue a factor in this loss? Jalen, why don't you uh, go first? Um, I mean, I'm not one to make excuses, but uh, you know, it's one of those things. Uh, I mean, we were a little gas, you could tell. Um, we weren't used to to that many games in, in, in that many days. Um, but I think it, you have to credit more Florida's defense than than anything. So, um, give all the credit to Florida. Yeah. Uh, Definitely Floyd's defense was the, the credit for, you know, us losing energy. Um, I mean, that's about it. Not really an excuse to get tired. I mean, we've played a lot of minutes before. We played a lot of games before. <coughs> but, um, yeah, just credit to Florida. They, they, they did a great job today. Here on the front row. Hey, uh, Matt, this one's for you. You really led the charge during that comeback late in the first half. Momentum seemed to be swinging in your guys' favor. You had a big three, started at the free throw line, then that dunk in transition. What happened to start the second half? Obviously, Florida's defense came out great, but what else? Where did that momentum go? Uh, they came out, punched us in the mouth, um, and we couldn't really uh, get over the hump after that. So that's about it. OK, here on the right toward the back of the room. Best season this program's had since 1970. It's hard to think about it right now, but can you guys talk about what this year and this run meant when, in Vaughn history, you guys are going to forever 
be remembered by the, that fan base that has showed out for you guys all year? Um, Jalen? Uh, it's it's kind of hard to look at it right now. Um, historic season. Uh, I couldn't be prouder of my teammates um, for the way we fought all year. Uh, from from losing that first game to, to that two and four starting conference, um, the way we battled back and we fought to get here. Um, I, I'm, I couldn't be prouder, like I said, of my teammates and, and the seniors just for, for battling all year. Um, it's not something that we could think about, obviously, right now. Um, it's a tough way to go out, but like I said, I'm proud of my guys. You want Matt to respond as well? Okay. Uh, I mean, yeah, I can't really reflect on it right now. Maybe in a couple of days, you know, it'll really sink in on you know, how great we, we played this year. But um, just, just just sad that it, was, it had to end like this. But um, I mean, it is what it is. And I mean, we had a great year. Proud of my guys, like you said. And um, there's no one else I'd rather be able to do it with than these guys. So, you know, I'm, I'm just thankful that we were able to have a great year. Any other questions for Matt or Jalen? No hands? OK. We'll let you guys go back to the locker room with uh, your SID, Steve Mest. Great season, guys, and thanks for being with us. Questions now for Coach. Coach here on the extreme left. Mark, do you think that ultimately it just kind of caught up to you guys in the end? Like, and Jay, I mean, it's four years. He's had such a, a leadership position. He had done so much this year. Matt also, that they were just, it, it just looked like they were emotionally wiped out. I don't know if emotionally, and, and, you know, I think it's hard sometimes, you know, when you get down, um, and, and we got down to Florida, especially in the second half. But there was, I, I thought today was the first day that I, I, our guys looked fatigued. Um, both Jay and Matt looked fatigued. And, and I don't know if that was because we had just played 48 hours ago or, um, or, or, and, you know, some of it from a mental standpoint, when, when you play, when Florida plays the defense that they played and it made it difficult for them, um, you know, it, it, it's hard sometimes to, to show emotion. You know, you, you're just trying to fight to stay alive. Um, but, you know, it's, th th Florida was ready. They, they did a really good job, and, you know, kudos go out to them. They did a really good job of their game plan was, was good, and they executed it, and they have great athletes, and they played well. Okay, we'll stay over on the left side. And, and speaking to Jay just uh, a few minutes ago, he said that he felt like it started to catch up to him late in the season. If you watch your team close enough, I think that's probably accurate. Yeah, you know, I, I don't know. It, it, he, they played a lot of minutes. Um, they, you know, Jay played a lot of minutes. Him and Matt played a lot of minutes over their whole career, you know. And I think, uh, you know, it might be, you know, we, we knew, you know, when we were two and four um, that every game, when we talked about the seventh game mentality, that every game we had to, we had to win if we were going to get to this point. You know, so there was a lot of pressure, um, you know, and, and – those guys worked. It's, you know, people don't realize it's just not practice. You know, it's, it's getting into the weight room. It's individuals. It's, it's a grind. Um, you know, and when we were 2-4 and four, uh, to win 13 games and we won some close games, and you know, those guys worked. And, and, and Jay, and particularly Jay, you know, he has the ball in his hands all the time. You know, so it, it is draining. Um, but I, I don't know if it was – I don't know when it started to affect him. You know, you could tell today that you know he was he was a little bit fatigued. Um, even I think in the in the in the um, the conference quarterfinals against Richmond, he has to come out um, early in the first half. And you know, usually, you know, he, you know, even if I want to take him on, he doesn't want to come out. Right. You know, so there was some fatigue, but that, that's not an excuse. Like I said, you know, Florida, they deserved the win. They they, they were the better team tonight. Go ahead. Mark, I, apparently I'm the only one here doing this, but um, what about the, the, you know, the emotions, uh, the, the range of emotions over the past week where there's the uncertainty coming out of D.C., then you get in, and then it's like a short trip to Dayton, then you, 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 know, you beat UCLA and the big, you know, you were emotional yourself, and then you have to come down here, uh, you know, to get back up again. It's like a... 
Yeah, but, you know, this is a dream of a lifetime, you know, for our players, for the coaching staff. You know, this, this, is, this doesn't happen every day, you know. So, you know, if, if this was something that went on for two or three weeks, then, you know, it would be, you know, it, that wouldn't be good. But, you know, we were on a high, and I think you can fight through, um, you know, for a couple, get, a, a couple days um, just, just through adrenaline. Um, but I think... When, when you get down by 15, that adrenaline rush that you have is out the window, you know, and, and, and I think that's what, and, that, and like I said, give Florida credit, they got us down, and it was hard to, to fight through it. Coach, let's move back over on the right toward the front. Uh, Coach, he wasn't out here with Jay and Matt, but can you talk about what Idris has meant to this team over the last four years? I mean, at 6'3", 13 a, rebounds yeah. speaks to his heart. Yeah, I, I've been doing this a long time, and he's one of the top five most unself, unselfish players that I've ever coached. You know, we don't run anything for him. He never complains. Um, you know, he plays the hardest guy offensively. Um, you know, you look at him tonight, you know, he had 13 rebounds. That, that sucker wasn't going to quit. You know, he doesn't have great skill, but... He, he, he epitomizes the toughness that, that we try to, to play with and the grit and the blue-collar approach. And he's just, just a great teammate, um, you know, someone that, that, you know, winning is the most important thing. He could care less if he got one point or 21 points. He wants to win. And um, it's been a pleasure coaching him. And he's, he's come a really long way. But he, he's, he's the glue of our team. You know, Matt and Jay get a, get a lot of the credit, and they and deservedly so. But without Idris in, in that, he, he brings us together. He, you know, he's the glue. He, he makes all the big plays. He gets, you know, you know, people that don't know basketball don't appreciate it. But people that really know the game really appreciate a, a guy like that. And, and for me, being a head coach, you know, he's – I'm lucky to have the opportunity to coach him because there's not a lot of guys, especially in, this, in today's world where – they would sacrifice that much for their teammates and, and not shoot. And, hey, you know, they'd be complaining about coach run, run a play. I'm not getting enough shots. He, he's all about winning. And, and, and that's, that's going to – he's going to have a lot of success in his career because of that. Closing questions now for Coach Schmidt. Coach, you, you talked about the defense, their defense, a little bit in your opening statement. Uh -huh. But it seemed like every time you guys would get it back to 9, 10, 11, they came up with a turnover, got an easy transition bucket. Can you, can you speak on a little more specifically about just what the Gators did that it seemed like they were able to clamp down a little bit every time you got almost there? Yeah, when, when the team is more athletic, longer and stronger, you know, I, I, I was telling my, my SID, it's, that's, a, that's a bad trifecta. And Florida was stronger, more athletic, and longer. You know, so in a game like this, every, you know, it was hard to get open looks. But when you do get open, open looks, you got to knock them down. And we didn't do that. Um, when we got open looks, for the most part, we missed. And they sped us up. They, they're long. They, were getting, they did a good job getting our shooters, knocking them off the line. Uh, then when we drove, their length really um, affected us. And they were in the passing lanes. They did a really good job, um, you know, getting to our shooters, getting into the gaps. Um, they, they averaged 16 points off the turnovers. And, and one of the keys going into the game was try to, you know, make, n not allow them to get, you know, more than 16. And um, they got 25, you know, so we lost that battle. And, and I, I'm a big guy on, on the, the columns in the bottom right-hand corner, all right? That tells a lot about the game. And we lost every one of them, you know, and that's, that's a credit to Florida. Last question on the extreme left. Mark, if you can um, put the, the season in perspective, uh, 26 wins, obviously the the 48 seasons, and I, what a year, really. Yeah, it's hard, you know, uh, you know, as a coach or as a player to, to you know, it, losing stings, and if it doesn't sting, then you're not a competitor. Um, but just you know, thinking about what we've done, Bonaventure has has great tradition, um, you know, way back to the Stith brothers, um, and for us, for this team, to break the record of the most wins speaks volumes about our season because the seasons before and the tradition that we have, we've had great teams that have never done that. Um, you know, for us to win um, an NCAA game for the first time in 48 years is just, it's unbelievable. And, I, and I, I've said this, 
you know, and I told the seniors uh, in the locker room, you know, we're proud of what they've accomplished. Um, when they got here, you know, we were building this program, and they they are going to be known for for not just sustaining it, but making it more of a national program, and and that that's what I'm proud of. You know, the, the wins are great, and but. W we got the respect of the country now, and um, and it, and, it's, and it was it's taken a while um, to get that, but you know, I'm just proud of of what we accomplished, and you know it's hard to put it into words sometimes, um, especially now when we just coming off a um, you know a, a loss, um, but we did some incredible things that that you know the guys are going to look back on, you know years days years from now and 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 looking like, wow, you know, that this team is going to be remembered forever, you know, for what they've done. And um, we can't allow this one game here to, um, to jeopardize or um, to affect what we've done throughout this year. Um, you know, so it's, it's disappointing. Um, but only one team ends, or two teams, I guess, the NIT, um, ends in, with a win. So... Well, I, I'm, I'm happy that you know, we were able to get this far, and I'm happy for the seniors to be able to experience something that, that they've dreamed of. All right, Coach, thank you so much. Thank and you. And again, congratulations on this great season. Thank you so much. Appreciate it.